Get ready to give your gifts with style. I'll show you how you can turn these Dollar Tree glass stones into one of a kind, beautiful, fine jewelry. Hi guys, it's Tony. And you know what? When I was in Dollar Tree the other day looking for pieces to make my ornament snowman figure, I was really surprised to find that Dollar Tree had these little glass beads. And they come in all kinds of different colors. This is really great because I sometimes make jewelry for my friends as Christmas gifts. So I was really excited about this. Um, but I really wanted to have, uh, I was wishing that they had larger beads so that I could do like pendants or different variations. And then I remember, you know what, I use these glass beads all the time for my projects and I figured out a way to make these glass jewels look like precious stones like this isn't that pretty so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create these precious stones out of these Dollar Tree glass beads and how to wrap them in wire so that you could use them as jewelry. I'm going to make some bracelets and some pretty earrings and different things out of um, these pieces. And hopefully you could come up with some nice gifts for someone special. So what you're going to need for the jewelry that I'm making is this silver beading wire. You can get this at any craft store, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I got this from Walmart. It was 20 feet for $2. You're going to need scissors. I like to use these floral scissors because they can cut wire. And needle nose pliers, which is a jewelry tool. You can find this at a craft store or at um, Walmart. You're going to need some glass gems. I got these from Dollar Tree. I got small white ones and large blue ones. And to create the different color stone effect, I'm using this multi-surface acrylic paint. You can get these at Walmart for less than a dollar each. And I'm using a little clear fingernail polish. You're also going to need some finishing pieces depending on what you make like earring hooks or posts and clamps for the necklaces. Okay so I'm going to start by making my stones and I'm making this green stone and this bluish green stone. I'm going to make a, um, a bracelet that sort of alternates between the large stone and the smaller stone. Okay, I'm using this green, like I said, multi surface paint. Just gonna put a drop of green there and some black. And I have two very small brushes. Let's start with the little ones first. I'm going to turn these on the flat side. That's the side I'm going to paint on. Do a few of these at a time. And I'm going to start with the green. And what I'm doing is I'm just sort of blotting some color down. like that. While it's still wet I'm going to put some black splotches down and you just sort of brushing it on there. Put some more green, have a nice mix.
and when you turn it over you get this sort of um, artsy natural um, dimension of colors. So we're going to do that with um, all the rest of them. Just have sort of a um, kind of blotchy variation of color. Push it around a little bit. And then some spots of black. And the black really gives it the dimension. So the glass kind of magnifies the colors. Probably only need one more blue for the um, for the bracelet. I'm gonna make a couple of them. I could do a pendant. Um, I have extra green, so I could do earrings. Do about four of these, but I'm using the same colors. the look I want. So I'm going to switch these around a little more so it's not as choppy. It's like you're doing an abstract painting. But what I'm going to do meanwhile, I'm going to put these in the oven to cure. You're going to sit them upward on the pan and let them bake at 350 for an hour. So these spent some time baking in the oven for about an hour. Now I'm going to put some clear fingernail polish on on the painted part of it just to protect it and give it that shiny glossy look. So it sort of looks like glass on this side. But the best way to do this is just to hold it in your hand and brush the paint on and it won't move as much. Okay so now all the pieces are dry. I baked them and I added the uh, um, clear fingernail polish on the outside and this is what they look like. These are some different colors that I use. This is the sort of dark brown red with the blue stone. This is what the blue looks like, this color. And this one was a gold, sort of a gold cream color. So, so you can get different variations. Um, this purple was this one here turned out really blue but they look really nice as stones and they'll look even better when you encase them in the silver wire so that's what I'm going to do next I'm going to show you how to put these in encase them in the silver wire so that you can use them as jewelry. We're going to use this for a pendant like this. So I'll show you how to do something where you have one um, loop at the top. Okay, we're going to start with silver wire and so I'm going to have two pieces that are like nine inches long and right in the center of those two pieces, you want to hold the two pieces together. So I'm going to twist it in on itself 
and twist it about three times. One, two, three. So I have something that looks like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put this twist on the side of the stone and just sort of hold it on the side. And what I'm going to do next is take these the top pieces and cross one over in front of the stone and one in the back. Twist the other side. Just push that downward on the stone. While you're at the top, and two twist on the side of the stone. Okay. Now, next you're going to take the bottom part of one half of the twist and the bottom part of the other one and you're gonna move them both to the center of the back and I'm gonna twist twist that together those two pieces one two, three. I want this to be kind of tight. So I'm going to use, I could, you could use your pliers to, to twist it. Turn it over and take those other two pieces and twist those two in front. So this is going to end up being the top of your stone. You want those um, two twisted pieces to come together at the top like this. And twist this a little more. And bring these two together and twist them. So now my stone is encased and the wire is wrapped in the wire so that it doesn't slip out. I'm going to use something small. I'm going to use this paintbrush to roll the wire around just to make a, a, a loop in the wire. like this so I have something to hang the piece on and then I'm going to wrap the wire around itself and then cut off the excess okay and I'm going to use my needle nose pliers to sort of twist that in more now, what you can do is use a chain or something pretty, or either you can even use the wire if you want. To hang your pendant on. I decided that just using the wire gave it a simple, elegant, beautiful look. So I took two pieces of wire, folded them in half, measured them around my neck, and I put one half through the loop on one end of the necklace and another on the other side. Then I twisted both wires once near the loop just to keep the pendant in place. I twisted the ends of each starting where I wanted it to come together in the back. Then I added a toggle and a loop and twisted the wire around each piece. 
Now I have a beautiful necklace. Okay, so for my bracelet, because I'm going to need to attach it on both ends, I'm going to um, wrap this a little different than um, what I did for the necklace. So instead of using two pieces of wire, I'm going to use four pieces of wire. For the smaller stone, I cut four pieces of wire about seven inches long. To get two loops on each end, you're going to start with the same process you did for wrapping the wire for the pendant. Twist the first two pieces of wire together and hold it on one side of the stone. Then move one piece of wire across the front of the stone and one across the back towards the top of the stone. Then twist the two wires on the opposite side downward against the stone. Cross two of the bottom wires towards the middle of the stone. Then twist them together tightly. Cross the last two towards the back center and twist them together. Twist the front and back twist together. Turn the stone upside down and repeat the whole process again with the remaining two wires. Now you have wires on each end that you can make loops in. With the two straight twisted wires, start to make a loop on one end of the piece. While the loop is still partially open, link the two pieces together. Twist the wire around the loop and cut off the excess. Make a closed loop on the other side and repeat the process for the rest of the pieces. Just remember you need four pieces of wire, nine inches long for the large stone, and four pieces, seven inches long for the smaller stone. Okay, so here I am with my beautiful necklace and earrings and my lovely bracelets. I'm going to keep these for myself. I love this bracelet. So gorgeous. So this whole set of the three pieces will cost you about $8 to make. And you'll still have a ton of glass stones, earring hooks, and toggles left over. So if you wanted to make another set, it'll only cost you four extra dollars to buy the two rows of silver wire that you'll need for this. These are inexpensive gifts but they will be priceless because they're one of a kind, hand painted works of art created by you.